Okay, so MX Linux has just been released on Raspberry Pi 5, so let's take a look. So I first found out about this in this 9 to 5 Linux story. So it's based on official Raspberry Pi OS, the latest version, Bookworm, and it's using XFCE 4.18. And there's loads of customization on the first boot, which I'm not showing in the video, but basically it goes through all sorts of things, uh, and they've mentioned it in here. Configure the host name, domain name, enable disable the Samba server for MS networking, set up the system locale and time zone as well as to enable or disable various system services such as Bluetooth, SSH, rsync, sudo, cron, etc. So let's have a look at it. If I call up a terminal and control alt t works fine and go to NeoFetch, so you can see it's my Raspberry Pi 5, kernel 6.1.0. So the window manager is xfwm4 and I'm running it stock, no overclock or anything and this is my 8 gig Pi 5. Now Raspi config is in here so you can do all the same sort of things you can do with Raspberry Pi OS, so all your system options and everything. So it's nice to see that's included. It's not always included in operating systems on the Raspberry Pi, but it gives a lot of customization. And I haven't tried yet, but you can switch between Wayland and X. So let's have a look at one of the things that I really like about MX Linux, and that's the integration of Conkey. Now I think normally it's supposed to come on straight away, but as this is an early version, uh, you have to enable it in here. So if I start typing Conkey, you can see it comes up. And if I click on Conkey toggle, it shows. But if I also go back into Conkey and select Conkey Manager, you've got all these various different modes that you can switch between. So you can see all the different styles. In fact, let's move this up here so you can see, because some of these are really quite big and let you monitor so much. So here's one with lots of information. Uh, and when you find one that you want, you're just ticking it. And you can use more than one. So that one looks pretty cool. So let's tick that and keep going down. This is quite a minimal one. Various different clock options. You know, some of these with the rings to show CPU usage and RAM and so on. And let's just flick through a bit quicker. So nice big clock here. But there's another clock I used in my Pi News video. Actually, that's nice. In fact, that looks better than the other one. I might have to turn off that first one. There's a music playing option here with a record on there. That's an attack on the senses, nice and bright. That looks quite cool as well. Quite like this one as well. Where's the clock? There's the clock. If I now minimize this, You'll see <laughs> that I've got two on there at the moment. So I need to close one of those down. Uh, so let's just go down all the way through just to show every single one. So you can pause it if you want to see one in closer detail. Not sure what was happening there. A couple of these are blank. I don't think they were before. There you go. So loads of things on there, but let's just go and turn off that other one I had. So I think I was turning off this one. Which one was this one? Yeah, I was going to leave that one on because I quite like that one. And don't want that clock. I think that's probably it. Yeah, I, do. I like this clock. It's really cool. Looks like an old was it HTC mobile phone. And we've got our temperature here, CPU, how many processes are running. Yeah, it does, it does look cool. And obviously if you change the background, so desktop settings, and obviously if you pick a wallpaper that's quite fussy, then it doesn't tend to work. You see that doesn't tend to work on this corner bit. It's not, it's not as bad as some of the others. Uh, so you really want to pick something pretty plain if you're going to put that overlay. See, that, that kind of works because none of this interferes with this. It's quite a nice color background. Yeah, very impressive. And everything is nice and logical. If you right click on the screen, you've got all sorts of things here that I can create a launcher or a web link or a folder and create documents. I can open a terminal here, open root Thunar here, which is quite nice to see. So if you're trying to access uh, a folder that you normally can't get access to, then you're gonna be able to do that and make changes. Uh, and as you can see, we get this warning about root and applications are also accessible through here as well. 
or you can do as I would normally do and that's press the Windows key and then just start typing so like I was doing with Conkey or Gparted and you can launch that Gparted is already installed and it expands the partition on its own I'm using a 128 gig uh, micro SD card I did try to install this on an SSD drive and it didn't boot or it tried to boot but it came up with lots of errors and I've actually had this with my own version of KDE Plasma where if I wrote an SD card image and then wrote it to a USB it didn't boot but I'm not sure if there is something about that or not but yeah with SD card it worked first time so I did install a Dolphin emulator on here because I wanted to see what the 3D performance was like but it's not as good as I don't know if that's a later version but I definitely found that the performance wasn't quite as good because in my tablet video recently I showed Dolphin emulator and it definitely had a big improvement in performance when I used Vulkan but I couldn't get Vulkan to work properly on this so this is OpenGL as you can see and the OpenGL performance is a bit slow it's not it's not terrible but uh, it is a bit slower than the Vulkan performance I was getting on Raspberry Pi OS so it's just not quite there with the audio and uh, it, it is a bit stuttery every now and then. It's not running at full speed. As you can see on the top, there's a percentage level there. But if I quit out of it and uh, enable Vulkan, graphics and Vulkan, and if I used this first one, which I, I can use with Raspberry Pi OS. So let's try that again. You see it doesn't it doesn't allow me to do it so it doesn't seem like enough of it is in there but when i turned on this one llvm pipe it did launch but the performance wasn't there yeah it's it's definitely slower even on the menu system i can see it's already slow so i'm not kind of not that sure why that is uh whether it gets slightly slower updates i see that there are actually updates now yeah, I can't see anything to do with Vulkan or drivers or anything like that unless I'm missing it there. But I like the way it offers the updates. I like the way that all this is listed. This is actually my keyboard uh, and it tells me, you know, fully charged. I've got eject for any drives. I've got my Ethernet, Bluetooth. And also I've got a clipboard, so recent commands. Couldn't get the PS2 emulator to work on this, but I didn't try for a long period of time because it's more about the operating system if we have a look through the apps that come with it so accessories obviously Conkey that I've already gone through which I really like Featherpad MX Updater screenshot options in there Sensor Viewer haven't tried that one yet CPU Thermals oh yeah that's quite cool PWM Fan it's a little bit like P Sensor games uh, again I've, I've installed a load of things just basically went through the store to be able to see what I could install but yeah most of the games are pretty low res uh, so Firefox is the browser that's on there at the moment I'll show video in a minute we've got VLC already installed MX tools I like the way that you can see top left there's MX user and FAQ there's loads of information on this so if you're new to it and you want to find that information it's quite handy disk manager USB formatter MX Cleanup Plat, that's something we don't have in Raspberry Pi OS. MX Repo Manager, lots of MX specific tools. Where's that cleanup gone? Okay, select user, clear folders, cache, thumbnails, clear apps, cache, clean, flat pack. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So, office settings, lots of things in here, very configurable. MX Tweak and MX Tools, look. Let's do that, MX Tools and MX Tweak. And also as uh, MX Package Installer as well. So if we go to Games, for instance. So a few choice things I guess they put in there. Super Tux Cart, to be fair, is very good. Play on Linux as well, so all your uh, sort of managing all your games and everything. If we go into Office, let's see what they're recommending here. Abbey Word, Calibre. Yeah, quite like the way they've laid it all out and everything. Themes. Okay, so we can put various different themes in here straight from this. So if we try this, what's it going to do? Install. Okay, so that's starting to install. Okay, so Orcus theme. Shall we see if we can find it now? Ah, theme. 
It's not there, but that's probably because I've launched it beforehand. So let's try launching that again. MX tweak theme. Yeah, Orcus Dark. What else have we got in here? So Orcus Arc. Oh, you can see some of it's changing the icons. High contrast, MX Comfort, MX Dark, Numix. And what was the other one? MX Tools. So yeah, just, just very clean and very simple to understand. What does it do for Conky then? This app enables detailed changes to the active Conky. It supplements Conky Manager, which should be used for basic settings. So we've got edit here. Oh, okay. And this gets us into the, the Conky settings. This is, so I've looked at installing it on various other systems before and I haven't really been successful. I did make some changes to some of the themes and things like that. But the fact that this is all laid out and actually just so integrated into the operating system is really cool. So let's try the browser. Uh, so Firefox is the one that's installed, but this is an older version. It did say in the nine to five uh, Linux and was only given 480. So I'm gonna install Chromium, but let's, let's have a look at this first of all. So, oh, I'm getting 720 at least. Uh, they said in their review they were only getting 480, I'm sure. But you can see it's struggling at 720, oh dear. Right, so let's install Chromium. Uh, and let's try that from the store. So if I type in Synaptic, you can see we get a Synaptic Package Manager. And there's loads of things in here. And this is where I got all the games from, um, just, just sort of searching through in here. And you've got to be careful with Chromium because there's a game called Chromium, but we want the Chrome browser. So Chromium browser, just tick it and mark for installation and then hit apply and apply and it will make all those changes. Not as nice looking as the Discover Store in KDE, but it's very functional and there's loads of stuff in there. Although I do get the impression a lot of the time it's showing you the uh, x86 or x64 versions rather than the actual ARM based versions because some things don't work. But this is something you do get on Raspberry Pi. You probably could as this is based on Raspberry Pi OS, you could probably install PyApps and PyKiss to give you, uh, you know, some more compatible apps and games for ARM64 devices. Okay, so close. And let's see where Chromium turns up. So, yeah, Chromium web browser. You can see I pinned Dolphin there. I can also do the same, pin to dock. In fact, there's loads of options here, look. Edit launcher. You can move it around, look, move it up, move it down and so on. But let's leave that for now and let's paste in my video and see what it does. So they mentioned that 1440 uh, in the 9 to 5 Mac story was, was still pretty decent. So let's go full screen and oh, it did come up quick. Stats for nerds. So. 25, they usually drop frames right at the start. It looks good looking at the video, and yeah, it doesn't appear to be dropping frames. So video performance in Chromium, they almost ought to just install Chromium as the as the default browser, or at least, you know, put both in as an option, like Raspberry Pi OS does. Uh, let's give it a try on 4K, although it was occasionally dropping on 1440, but let's give it a go. Come on, 4K playback. It's only 4K 30. Oh, look. Oh, no. Yeah, I can't handle it, unfortunately. Never mind. Let's try BBC and just, yeah, the web browser feels right. Chrome's also a lot smoother than Firefox. So the scrolling on Firefox, especially that older version, was pretty awful. Um, but this is nice and snappy. Uh, you know, really shows up how, how nice and fast the Raspberry Pi 5 is. So I managed to install PyApps, which you can see is working, uh, and I also, uh, so PyKiss installed as well. They both seem to be working fine. Obviously not everything they do is supported by the Pi 5, but it's nice to see that they both can be installed. So let's just try games because I found a weird one here, uh, which was this table tennis game. This is quite cool. Uh, so full screen and game start. So I've had to switch to my phone to be able to record this because for some reason uh, the screen capture device just doesn't like it. It must be in some weird resolution. But you can see here, look, uh, 
the, <laughs> this is practice and my opponent is ruthless. But I quite like the idea of it and I quite like the controls and it's very responsive and everything. Uh, obviously it's very basic graphics, but yeah, I quite like quirky games like this. Anyway, let's try something else. Oh, Megatron is something I used to play ages ago. Um, and this is this is quite a cool game. Uh, although it seems to be, it's almost like you're supposed to use it with uh, the mouse at the same time. Although that gets really confusing. So if you've ever played Light Cycles, oh, I'm not going to be able to catch them out there. But it's, yeah, very fast. Doesn't struggle at all, but you can also move around, change your perspective. But I don't know if that helps me or not. Oh no, have I, I haven't got a lot of room now, have I? Well, that was tight. Blimey. No. <laughs> okay. Barrage was quite entertaining as well. So very old school. Uh, all you're doing is uh, just aiming in front of things and kind of judging the speed to be able to try and take them out. But it's pretty good. Right click um, is like a reload. So trigger rally. Oh, well, slippery. And I'm supposed to be going for the checkpoints, am I? Or let's just try and do some, let's try and get some air. Oh, looks like I have to go back. Let's just go over this ridge and see if we can jump into this area. Brilliant. That's what I planned. Oh, two wheels, look. Yeah, I meant that. Sounds good. Have we got a handbrake? Yeah. Right, let's try something else. First person th 3D shooter game, enemy lines. <laughs> well, judging by the menu, the graphics aren't going to be the best. Oh, crikey. Wow. Okay. I guess it is 3D. This must be pretty old. Oh, what's coming on here, look? <laughs> Does the... Oh, okay, we can move around that with with the controls. What's that there? You need to stay close to the city for your reactor to work. <laughs> the city. Can I get over that? No. Okay, so great work by the team at MX Linux for being uh, one of the only sort of three operating systems that are out on Pi 5 at this stage. Uh, I always really like it and the Conky integration is excellent. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.